Here's another form of a quadratic function. Um, and this technically used to be called standard form. I don't know why our book, that's an R, and this is an N, standard form of a quadratic. Um, I don't know why it calls vertex form standard form and vice versa, but at the end of the day, recognize it. And I know you've seen this. AX squared plus BX plus C. You've seen these quadratics in this form before. Um, <clears throat> same idea. If it's a quadratic, then either it's a parabola in graph that opens up or opens down. And the leading coefficient is still going to tell me whether it opens up or opens down. So if the leading coefficient is positive, it opens up. If the leading coefficient is negative, it opens down. Um, these low points, these high points, again, are called vertices. If it's a low point, it's a minimum. If it's a high point, it's a maximum. And then the axis of symmetry is also that vertical line that goes through that vertex. The same as the other case, it's just now we're starting in a different form. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things here. I'm going to do an example here, an application that's typical when we have a quadratic in this form. But I'm going to also show you how to convert into vertex form if you choose to do that, which I would suggest not to because it's a waste of time. But uh, I'll show you anyway. So what you're going to do from this form is first find the x-coordinate of your vertex, okay? And if you find the x-coordinate of your vertex, then you also find or found your equation of your axis of symmetry. AOS is axis of symmetry. So once you know the x-coordinate of your vertex, you also know the equation of your axis of symmetry. And you could find that when you're coming from this form by taking x equal to the opposite of b over 2a, where b is the coefficient of x and a is the coefficient of x squared. So this is how we find the x-coordinate of the vertex. And then obviously the y-coordinate we find by plugging in the x-coordinate, by doing f of x, right? Plugging the x-coordinate, and I'll represent it in, you know, function notation. Plug the x-coordinate into the equation or the function to find the y-coordinate, okay? Plug x in to find y, in other words. So I wanted to take, um, let me see if I can find this. I wanted to take... Here it is. An example from the book. Let me just write it down. The opposite of 0.01x squared, 1.1. So I have. So I have a function f of x. Not f of x. Is equal to the opposite of 0.01x squared plus 1.18x plus 2. Let me just verify that again. Take that over here. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So this function represents the projectile, and projectile is basically another form of a parabolic path called a projectile that follows this kind of path. And obviously, you can see that it's a parabola facing down because the leading coefficient is negative. And if you notice, this is also in this form, correct? Now, if I identify my pieces, my a is the coefficient of x squared, which is negative 0.01. My b is the coefficient of x, which is 1.18. And my c is the constant, okay? So I identify all the pieces of this quadratic in this form. Now, there are a couple questions that um, I might ask you. Let me first find all the same details that I found in the other one. So, for example, let's find the vertex. Let's find the axis of symmetry. Let's do all that. So let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex first, which is the opposite of b over 2a. And b is 1.18, so I'm taking the opposite of 1.18 and dividing by 2 times the coefficient of a, which is negative 0.01. Be careful with your signs. Obviously, this is going to be a decimal. I'm not going to have a whole number. Let's see what I get. 1.18 divided by 2 times 0.01. Oh, it's nice. It turns out nicely. Negative divided by a negative is positive, so this is 59. 1.18 divided by 2 times 0 0.01. Negative divided by a negative is positive. So the x-coordinate of my vertex, let's start writing that over here, is 59. I also just determined my axis of symmetry equation because the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes through the vertex. So the axis of symmetry equation is x is equal to the x-coordinate of the vertex. Once I know the x-coordinate of a point, it's very easy to find the y-coordinate. Move this over a little bit. Because anytime you know x to find y, oops, what do you do? You plug x in, 
right? So I'm going to plug 59 into my function to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. So negative 0 0.01, 59 squared, plus 1.18 times 59 plus 2. And I'm going to go through that real quick. 59 squared times negative 0 0.01 plus 1.18 times 59 plus 2. I got 36.81. Okay, so my vertex is 59, 36.81. Now, <clears throat> um, oh. being that the parabola faces down, um, that tells me that the vertex is a maximum, and the maximum is at the point 59, 36.81. And just like I said in my last video, sometimes you'll see us separate the vertex into what we call the maximum value of this equation is the um, y-coordinate of the vertex, and it occurs at the x-coordinate of the vertex. So sometimes we separate it like that dependent on the question. So let's assume that this, this uh, function represents the projectile of a um, football player. So he kicks the ball and it follows that path, that parabolic path, okay? And I want to determine um, the maximum height of that path of the ball. What is the maximum height of the ball that follows that path? Of ball. Now, obviously, I need to know what my variables represent. So um, in this example, where is it? Here. My x-coordinate. Uh, represents the ball's horizontal distance, ball's horizontal distance, I'm just going to abbreviate, from the point of impact of the kicker, from point of impact. And f of x is going to represent the height of the ball in feet, so everything is in feet. So if I have a parabolic path, so this guy kicks his ball here. It moves like this. Um, X represents the distance from where he kicked the ball, and Y represents the height of the ball. Okay. What is the maximum height of the ball? Well, the maximum height of the ball would be the Y coordinate, in other words, the Y coordinate of the vertex. Right? We call that the maximum value. So what is the maximum height of the ball? What is the y coordinate of the vertex? 36.81 feet. Everything is in feet for this example. So this is another way of asking you to find the y coordinate of the vertex. What is the maximum height of the ball? Um, how far from the kicker does this occur? How far from the kicker does the maximum height occur? In other words, find the x-coordinate of the vertex. Another way of saying find the x-coordinate, how far away from, here's the kicker, right? This is the guy kicking the ball. <laughs> how far away from the kicker on a horizontal move here, right? How far from the kicker does that maximum height occur? So find the x-coordinate of the vertex, which we found to be, what was it, 59? 59 feet from the kicker. So this is another way of asking for the vertex. Okay, so um, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, you might be asked for the vertex, you know, in this form. It's a hidden way of asking for the vertex. It's a hidden way of asking for the maximum. That's why sometimes we say the maximum value is the y-coordinate and it occurs at the x-coordinate. Okay, so um, this is an example of, you know, finding these little pieces when I have a quadratic function originally in this form. Now, if you prefer, let me show you why. Uh, 
get 2x squared plus 3x, I don't know. Um, I'm going to make it easier. 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. Okay. If you prefer to go from vertex form, the other form of a quadratic, you'd have to convert this into that form first, which I prefer not to do. I prefer to just go into this. X is equal to the opposite of B over 2A and plug it in. But some people, you know, everybody's different. But to do that, you have to create this form, right? You have to create this form, a times x minus h squared plus k. You have to create this form if you want to go into this vertex form where you can identify the vertex right away. And sometimes that takes longer, sometimes it's faster, and just, again, depends on preference. So what you need to do is what we call completing the square. First thing is I'm going to group my x's and I'm going to factor out this coefficient. So whenever you complete the square, you need a leading coefficient in front of x squared of 1. So I have to get rid of this 2. Obviously, here also, the coefficient in front of x is 1. So I'm factoring out 2, but not from the whole thing, just out of the x pieces, just out of these two. And when I take a 2 out of this, I get an x squared. We get two, I take a 2 out of this, I get 4x. I put this little box here to indicate what we call completing the square. I need to create a perfect square trinomial to be able to represent it this way. And then this 5 is out here. I didn't take the 2 out of the 5. It's just out there by itself. If you recall completing the square, you have to figure out what goes into this box. And to do that, you take um, well, b over 2 and you square it. In this case, I'm going to take 4 over 2 and I'm going to square it. So I actually get 4. Okay, so completing the square, what goes in this box, you take this guy, half it, and square it. Now, when you go ahead and just add a number to one side of an equation, you make the equation unbalanced. So now my equation, my function is unbalanced, and I would normally add the same number to the left-hand side of the equation to balance it back up, but my left-hand side has f of x there, and I don't want to put something there. So what I have to do is add another number to the right-hand side to make this balanced. Now, I didn't really add a 4 to this. I really added a 2 times 4. I added an 8 to this. So if I go and I take this 8 and I subtract it on the same side of the equation, really what I'm doing is I'm saying plus 8 minus 8. I'm only adding 0 to the right-hand side of this equation. So once again, if I have a coefficient here and I'm completing the square within the parentheses, this is not the number that I'm adding. I'm adding whatever this is times that. Because if I distribute this back through, it has to be the same thing that I started with. And if I do distribute this back through and subtract 8, I'll get the same thing that I started with. So whatever I'm adding here, I'm going to subtract it here. But if there's a number in front, I have to subtract that number times that number. Okay? Completing the square, so be careful with that. This makes a perfect square trinomial where if I factor it, I get an x plus 2 times x plus 2, x plus 2 squared, 5 minus 8 minus 3. Now my function is in vertex form, and I can go ahead and, you know, find the vertex, which is negative 2, negative 3. Uh, it opens up, so it's a minimum, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so th again, preference. I personally want to just go straight and do x is equal to the opposite of b over 2a. So in this case, x is equal to the opposite of 8 over 2 times 2, x is equal to um, 8 over, uh, negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2, which matches the x-coordinate here. Plug this back in to get the y-coordinate, it'll match negative 3. Uh, that's what I like to do if my original function is in this form. I like to go straight to this stuff that I said here. Otherwise, if it's in vertex form, then I'll go ahead and just use that vertex form. But if, if I'm already in standard form, if I'm in this form, I'd rather just go here rather than you know, complete the square and create this situation, but everybody is different to each his own. You still have to know how to complete the square for other things anyway, but, you know, you won't have to do that depending on what you're asked here. Like, I would only ask for the vertex or max or min or whatever. Go straight to your answer.